Welcome back, everyone, to PDH Deck Techs. I'm Joseph, and this week we're in the Selesnia Guild, working with green and with white. And our commander today is Wayfaring Temple. Wayfaring Temple is an XX elemental for one green white that has Wayfaring Temple's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. And also, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, populate. So this commander takes us in a very specific direction, but it is very powerful within that. That first ability cares about how many creatures we have on the field. Because of this, our commander's power and toughness will be constantly varying, but at least it can never be less than one since it counts itself. However, its ceiling is practically non-existent. This type of ability already lends itself towards token creature strategies, but the second ability cements it. Interestingly, that second ability populates after combat damage, meaning that one, we need to get our commander's damage through, but two, we're not limited to tiny token creatures, and we can do some very powerful things. So, what are our goals for this deck? We're going to build an army of token creatures, big and small, and our commander will lead them in battle to wipe out our opponents and make our army even stronger. First off, let's discuss this army. We're going to have every kind on the field, but we want our army to grow continuously over the course of the game. Starting off with the small tokens, we're going to be taking advantage of an underutilized tribe in magic, the Thalids. All of these fungus creatures have the following ability. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on this creature. Remove three spore counters to create a 1-1 sapperling creature token. These creatures will be slowly popping out sapperlings over and over during the course of the game, and PDH games are usually slow enough that we can really utilize their potential. They often have other abilities based off of sacrificing those sapperlings. Savage Thalid can regenerate any fungus, Vitaspore Thalid can give a creature haste, and Padded Mycoderm can pump our whole sapperling and fungus team. Other all-stars for our 1-1 token generation will be Presence of Gond and Selesnio Archangel. Presence of Gond is a creature enchantment for two and a green that has enchanted creature has tap, create a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token. While Selesnya Evangel is a 1-2 elf shaman for a green and a white that has pay one and tap and tap another untapped creature you control to create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token. Both of these will allow us to create a token creature every turn. Looking at larger tokens, we've got Trumpeting Herd, a sorcery for two green green that will give us two 3-3 three, three green elephants for only four mana, and Slime Molding, a green sorcery that will give us a token as big as the mana that we put into it. But a very interesting interaction occurs with Steadfast Sentinel and Anointer Priest. Steadfast Sentinel is a 2-3 human cleric for three and a white that has vigilance, but also has eternalize for four white white. So when it's in the graveyard, we can exile it and create a 4-4 black zombie copy of it. An Anointer Priest is a 1-3 human cleric for 1 and a white that has whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 1 life. But it also has Embalm for 3 and a white. With these two cards, the Embalm and the Eternalize abilities will actually give us token copies, which means we can then populate them with our commander. And if you think one Anointer Priest is going to give us a lot of life in this deck, you won't believe how much we get when we have 3 or 4 copies on the field. All of these token creatures on the field will make our commander absolutely huge, and we're going to take advantage of that with fight cards, such as Ram Through, an instant for one in a green that has a target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And if the creature you control has Trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. So this will not only take out an opponent's creature, but in the right setup will also take out a hefty chunk of their life. In addition, we've got one of my favorite token makers in the deck with Miming Slime, a sorcery for two and a green that has create an XX green ooze creature token where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So this will make a creature as huge as our commander that could easily make us an 8-8 or larger just for three mana, and then we get to populate it. However, we're not going to populate much if we can't get our commander's damage through. And between its size and its effect, our commander is always going to be the first creature blocked on the field. So we need to get its damage through with trample effects. 
We've got several cards dedicated to giving our commander trample. For example, enchantments like Armadillo Cloak, which will give our commander plus two, plus two, trample, and a lifelink. And Fists of the Ironwood, which will give our commander trample, but will also pop out two saplings to boost our token army. We've also got equipment with Haunted Cloak that will give our commander trample, but also haste and vigilance and Vorak Battle Horns that will give our commander trample and also means that they can't be blocked by more than one creature. Finally, we've got one of the best modal spells in the game for this deck, Seedling Charm. This is an instant for a green mana, and everything this deck wants is on this card. We want to protect our commander, Seedling Charm will regenerate it. Want to give our commander trample? Done. Want to interact with auras? Seedling Charm can return any creature aura to its owner's hand. I cannot stress what a good pickup this card is for this deck. But what if our commander gets knocked out? Well, we still have some one-off populate effects to help us take advantage of our big tokens. We've got Druid's Deliverance and Rootborn Defenses, two instants that will both protect us and our board, as Druid's Deliverance will fog the combat, while Rootborn Defenses will make all of our creatures indestructible. And Sundering Growth and Tristani's Judgment are two more instances that will function as key removal, with Sundering Growth working to destroy target artifacts or enchantments, and Tristani's Judgment exiling target creature. All of these will give us populate effects, weaken our opponents, but also make us stronger. So, how are we going to win? We're going to swing wide and swing tall, and absolutely decimate our enemies. We've already got our army of tokens, but in swinging wide, we can give them a little help with Borrowed Grace, an instant for two and a white that has creatures you control get plus two plus zero until end of turn, or creatures you control get plus zero plus two until end of turn. And by paying an Escalade cost of one and a white, we can choose both modes. And I really like this because it's modal, but we can also have both effects by just putting in a small amount more mana, so we get the best of both. So that's for swinging wide, but for swinging tall, we're going to be using our commander, of course. And sure, our commander is going to get trample, and yes, it is going to need to be protected. Now, I could talk about cards that give it a hexproof, like Tamiyo's Safekeeping and Sheltering Ward, or I could be talking about cards that will regenerate it, like one of my favorites, Fanatical Devotion. However, the best form of protection is going to be protection. We're going to use Mask of Law and Grace and Shield of Duty and Reason. Both of these are enchantments for a single white mana that will each give protection to two colors. Mask of Law and Grace will give protection against black and red, while Shield of Duty and Reason will give protection against green and blue. Between these two enchantments, our commander is going to gain protection from every color except for white. Protection is especially good in this deck. It will prevent our commander from being targeted or dealt damage by sources of that color. But more importantly, it will also mean that creatures of those colors cannot block our commander, making the protection potentially better than trample for getting our commander's damage in. But we can't rely too heavily on one creature, no matter how much we try to keep it on the field. So we do have two backup commanders with Crusader of Audric and Sign of the Wild. Both of these are three mana creatures whose power and toughness will be equal to the number of creatures we have on the field. And just in case, we're going to have a secret weapon in our back pocket. Remember how we're going to be swinging tall and wide? Well, a lot of that wide is going to be little 1-1 one -one creatures. And what are our opponents going to block? Not the little sapling, not the little 1-1 one -one warrior, and that's when they will realize their fatal error. When they realize we truly have might of the masses on our side where for one green mana, we can turn any creature on our board into a lethal threat, giving them plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature we control. And that is our Wayfaring Temple deck. It certainly looks straightforward on its face, but there are some very interesting card interactions we can use to take this commander from powerful and turn it into a top tier threat. This deck is going to run us about $18.5. The deck list is in the description. Please like and subscribe and come back next week when we visit the last guild in our series, the Simic Guild.